Are you always coming up with ideas? Do you marvel at successful business owners? Do you hate being told what to do? Ever take things apart just to see how they work? Are you a dreamer? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. But first, a word from our sponsor. Tapes' Specialties is the world leader in tape manufacturing and specialty conversion with over 40 years of experience. In addition to our pro brand of high-quality specialty adhesive tapes, we provide contract converting services that help improve your profitability, streamline your supply chain, and reduce inventory cost. We offer the most complete range of converting capabilities in the industry, such as... Cloth tape, double coated tape, specialty tape, paper tape, masking tape, vinyl tape, carton sealing tape, adhesive transfer tape, duct tape, phone tape, electrical tape, filament tape, foil tape, reflective tape. And the tape just keeps on rolling. Visit us online today at www.protapes.com or call us at 800 345 Pro Tapes, it's just how we roll. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another fantastic episode of the Entrepreneur Enclave, Life's Coming Attraction. I am your host, Kevin Wortham. If you ever thought about getting in shape, if you ever thought you were strong, then I've got this brother who is all of that. My dear friend, Pastor Earl Jenkins, how are you? Welcome to the platform. Hey, my brother, good to have to be a part of it. Absolutely. <laughs> now, you know, I got, you know, I got my first joke. I've been, man, ever since we've been planning this this conversation this interview i've been working on this joke so and and, and it might not be a joke it might be the truth you uh-huh. have to be the strongest pastor in mercer county ah <laughs> right you, right oh i don't know but I <laughs> do what i do <laughs> i i think we should have a spiritual weightlifting or push-up championship or competition what do you think man <laughs> Like each, like each church should put their best five guys together or women, and they battle. Oh, yeah. you, right? Huh? Man, that sounds like fun. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> love so, it. Love okay, it. Okay, so let's let's get started. Uh, what is the name of your product? It's called the Core Push Up Bar. The Core Push Up Bar. And how do we come about this invention? This product. Well, basic. Basically, I I've been lifting and exercising for the last i guess 35 years what have you yes and um throughout the lifting uh as you're younger you tend to go above and beyond so you know it's about heavy lifting that kind of thing so as i got up age around 25 i started realizing that my joints wasn't cooperating yeah. <laughs> and so i started lightening up a little bit lightening up then when i got about uh about 35 to 40 I started again to lift heavy, and then I had an ulnar nerve issue on my elbow yes. where I had to have surgery and push my ulnar nerve back in place. And that's when I decided that it's time to do more cal- cal- calisthenics and, uh, and, and leave the free weights alone, not necessarily alone in yes. total, but just work more on a, a, cal- a calisthenics. And then uh, from there, uh, long story short, I went back to school, natural cannabis sports medicine, when I learned the anatomy. And from there, I concluded how to use the, um, the uh, create this bar that yes. deals with the intrinsic muscles as well as uh, the 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 resistant. I mean, um, the outer muscles. Yes. Most people just look at the outer muscles and not seeing the inner muscles. But through uh, this bar, I was able to come up with a, a solution that worked both at the same time. Well, so let me let me slow down. Let me slow down. So, how mm-hmm. long has the bar been conceptually in your mind before you brought it to fruition? Nine years. It took me nine years to put it all together. Wow. Well, this is 10 years now. Okay. Yep. It finally came out in 10 years. Okay. So when you first come out, how did you do this? Did you have to create like a, a concept bar or there was a prototype bar? How did you I'm, do that? Well, that was a long process because yes. when the idea came in my head, I talked about turning. We had to first make sure there was nothing else out there similar. Yes. So that took about a year worth of research. Then when people came back to me and told me that it was nothing else out there, then we got an engineer 
to draw up the concept. The challenging part about that is it costs you a lot of money to see if it's going to work. Wow. You know, uh, and so it ran me about maybe seventeen to twenty thousand dollars to see if it's going to work based Wait. on the size. Time out, Pastor. Time out. You don't even know if it's going to work, but you've got to spend don't that even know. money to see if it's going right. to work. Wow. You see if it's going to and, work. And so, you it, know. so when you put that kind of money down, is he saying that if this doesn't work, we can come back and for seventeen, twenty thousand dollars, we can tweak it like two or three more times, or that's just a one shot deal? Uh, well, it all depends. Like for this, in this case, yes, an engineer won't take it unless they think it can. Okay, got you. You know, so so it's not like you just 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 thrown out in the abyss. It's no. He said, "Oh, well, conceptually, it sounds good." Yes. And so what happens now is he may take like a seven thousand uh, dollar initiation to get started, and then yes. another. Okay, it's looking good. Give him another four, so it can, so it kind of continues along the process. Yes. So by the time you reach that mark, you know that it's it's, it's capable okay. of yeah. being developed. But there's nothing uh, more concrete until it's finally done. Okay, because even be- after that, you still got to test it for the weight. You got to test the the environment of the uh, the product that it doesn't leak certain chemicals. It's just a whole lot of engineering stuff that it doesn't pee the different parts of the body while trying to do one part of the body. So everything had to make sense. So that took about three years to just get all that in place. Now, let me stop you, Pastor. So because this is the entrepreneurial enclave and we talk about entrepreneurship, I've got to ask this question. Mm -hmm. When when do you begin to do like the market research and when do you begin to put together the business plan? Well, my business plan actually came after I got it done. Got you. After it was completed and I saw that it was going to do uh, uh, and I target my crowd. That's okay. when I put the business plan together. Gotcha. And and I brought somebody to do that for me. Okay. So so who was your your primary target audience for for your product, the push up bar? Uh, ages between thirty five and up. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, Pat. I j- I just wanted to get that in there, Pastor. But please continue. Mm-hmm. So so you, okay. you you've got the product now. It's it's passing. I guess the physical efficacy test. And, right. And so now what's your attorney saying to you? What's the engineer saying to you? Well, the attorney now is your patent, that kind of thing. Yes. And then provisional patenting. The, uh, so we patent the first concept, the prototype. Then later on, we did the provisional patent, meaning that if someone wants to create something out of that, they would have to come to us. So yes. if we didn't create it now, you know, we had it already patented just in case later on we want to do it. And uh, no one could do it unless they come to us. But the engineer... His job now is to make sure that the way that we wanted it to accommodate was possible okay. and it not be too heavy. My prototype was about 35 pounds, well, about 30 pounds, which was too heavy for women to use. Yes. So the challenge was how do we get it light enough for women to use at the same time strong enough for men to use? Yes. And so we had to mix it with uh, fiberglass and uh, nylon. Wow. And so the balance between that going back and forth is almost going to work and all of a sudden it breaks. Wow. And then they had to do something. It's just a whole lot of uh, mechanical things they had to do. And um, and so once we got to the point where it can hold up to 300 pounds of body weight, yes. that was sufficient. Got you. And, uh, and from there, we began to process it even more. Wow. And uh, um, my biggest challenge was having it manufactured in China. Now, imagine this. You're sending money to China during the pandemic. Yes. You can't communicate as much. Yeah. <laughs> because prior to the pandemic, it was okay. And because of the hours difference, the hours and difference. Yes. But when the pandemic hit, it was really bad. Wow. We still had to continue the manufacturing. So I'm sending money over there. They're not responding to three or four <laughs> weeks later. It's like, man, they got all this money. It can easily say, yeah. you know, we, we ain't doing it. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, we ain't get that, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was a challenge. My my faith was really on uh, you know, ten. Yes. I mean, really, it just up there. And uh my uh my manager told me, she said, um, uh, I said, I didn't get no response. She said, Well, we gotta just hope it works. It's it's gonna work, but then I was like, What are we gonna do? She said, We're gonna send them over to beat them up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, hey, it's nothing we can do. But that was the challenging part for me, if yes. anything, just had that going. But when the uh, supply chain situation occurred, you know, just so much money to ship everything back and forth, yes. I realized that if we're going to make any money and without this being too costly for people to purchase, yes. we'll have to bring the molds, everything over to the state. Yes. So that became a chore. 
Okay. And I took about a year and a half to make, work a deal here in the, the United States and transferring uh, 10,000 pounds of machinery over the waters for uh, five, four months, you wait, know, wait, wait, and getting that here. Wait, time out, time out, time out. So you're saying that in this process of getting your first products designed over in China, you decide that you wanted to make them over in the States. So the machinery that they were using over there, you had to have that, you had to buy that machinery and bring it over here too? Mm -hmm. Right. I Holy developed, well, I, yeah, I, I, I made the decision to, uh, like we were saying music, I wanted my master. Yes. I wanted my mold. I you. didn't want, I didn't want to lease, at least that hour or anything like that. So yes. we created the mold. Yes. And that was created in China yes. and they were going to manufacture in China. But because of the supply chain, you know, we just said we best to bring it here. That was a major chunk. We had to ship all of that. Even the bars that we had made over there had to come along with it. Wow. And um, so we got here and then now we're dealing with a company in uh, Florida called Ally. Yes. And they now manufacture over in the state, which is a great thing. Wow. That's well, listen, thank you, thank you, thank you, because that creates jobs in, in the states. Now, yeah, uh-huh, absolutely. Now, and I know you are a pastor, you are a spiritual man, but I know that your faith was being tested. You said it, it, brought, it took you 10 years to bring this to fruition. Mm -hmm. In the yes. process of those 10 years, what were some of the challenges that you had to overcome within that time frame? Well, when I just mentioned, not, yes. it's just almost throwing money into an abyss. Yes. It's like, okay, even though we transfer the money, even though we do paperwork and so forth, there's no real law to say they have to do it. Got you. In fact, the, one of the greatest uh, steps I made was having a liaison between me and China. Yes. The China made garbage. They really make garbage. Something you can order online, you get it. It's like, what is this? Yes. Because that's what they do. But thank God I hired a guy to live in China. Yes. And, uh, and his job was to make sure they manufactured it correctly. To your because specs. the first batch they sent us was a complete mess. Wow. And they already had my money. But wow. so while he was there, at first I was fighting tooth and nail because the guy was expensive. My manager was like, oh, we're going to need somebody over there. Yes. I'm like, no. And she said, you're going to need some. And then thank God I did that because it would have been a mess. And so this guy was able to make sure that they did their job. And so forth. that was, a, that was a, uh, the number one challenge, yes. just, um, just hoping that they do the job. And then two, not knowing the, the surprises gotcha. of what it would cost to do it. No one had that price because, again, with the supply chain, they can call out any number. They knew wow. they was in demand. You know, wow. you ship something, they can just throw a number up. So you never knew. One minute is 10000 next minute is 17000 And then one minute is, is 44000 wow. So it, it can go, it just, you just didn't know. And so when it finally got here, I was able to breathe. Yes. You know. I know um, that's but, right. Now, you know, so that was the biggest challenge, not knowing the budget, if you will. Yeah. Now, and, now, you know, and that's not the case in every, that's not the case in inventing something. Yes. It's just during that time, you yes. know, because of the pandemic, everybody was like, okay, let me get all I can when I can kind of thing. Now, but and, that's not the norm. Now, you really can have a budget and know what something would cost. Now, Pastor, in, in terms of the budget, in terms of financing, did, did you... Were you self-financing? Did you have a group of investors? You know, how did you go about with the financing? All me. Uh, wow. And yeah, it was all me in the beginning. But when I got to a point where I had depleted myself, yes. then I called some good friends and yes. uh, was able to raise some capital among the friends, but not like a uh, a partnership or anything like that. They just okay, you need something, let me help you out. Understood. And um, so I had to, you know, you know, I had to do what I had to do because even the banks were. Um, reluctant in giving startup capital. Yes, yes. You know, we had a wonderful business plan. The business plan was great. It's a five-year yes. plan, and everything spelled out to us and, and you know completion. And yes. still, they were like, "Ah, oh, sell some bars first, and after a year, you can come back and see us." Wow. So that was all of my okay. savings and everything else that came with wow. it. <laughs> so you you were you were believing that this was going to come through and do what you needed to have it done on the commercial Absolutely. market. Absolutely. Okay. So I, I, I saw you on Facebook, I guess probably like two, three months ago. I think the bar was already here or you had the first prototype and you were at some uh, fitness conference. Tell me about that. How did you get involved in the fitness conference? Well, a good friend of mine, Kevin Johnson, who yes. owns Team 85 yes. uh, in Bordentown, who's doing a very good job. And I was a personal trainer at his facility. Yes. And uh, 
once I started this project, he had recommended that I go to this conference, which is a conference that encompasses all types of of business owners and all you know merch, um, retailers and that kind of thing that yes. come there all over the world. Yes. So I was able to get there through him and go with not with him, but under his uh, vendoring uh, vendor uh, uh, number and that kind of thing, and we were able to. Um, and introduce it to some people, and from there we it started taking off pretty well. Awesome. We met our uh, we brought a girl on staff now from that uh, conference. Ursa is called. Yes. But uh, she's uh, she now manages the whole project. And, and so, um, and so, how many bars have you sold since you 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 started the business here? I guess since you've come from the conference. Well, at the conference, we still hadn't position ourselves to sell. Okay, okay. It's just recently, I launched a company three weeks, about a month ago. Okay. In Hamilton, I mean, uh, in uh, Burlington. Yes. And at that point, we sold, uh, we're, 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 um, we're probably, we, we up about maybe 300 bars now. Nothing significant because we're not really pushing it just yet. Yes. We're now dealing with uh, facilities like the gyms, the, okay. um, the nursing homes and so forth. So we're establishing a foundation that now we have a nine, City tour yes. that we're uh, doing now. Uh, awesome. uh, Connecticut, okay. um, um, New York, uh, Delaware, uh, yes. New Jersey. So we have gyms set up already that are already purchasing. High schools are purchasing the bars in number. So we're working on certification um, okay. uh, for trainers. This is a whole lot we're doing. Hey, Pastor, I'm not in your business, nor am I in your business plan, but let's have <clears> some <throat> fun. What is, your, what is your sales pitch for pitching the bar to have uh, people... Uh, Try your bar. What's your what's your what's your thirty second pitch? What well, well, the main thing is using the body weight. Yes. Farm weight, the body is not accustomed to it. It makes an adjustment, but yes. you can injure yourself because it doesn't know it. Okay. It knows its own weight and it responds better to its own weight. Yes, it's almost like doing a lot of upper body and no legs. Your upper body is not going to develop because the legs know that it won't be able to hold the upper body. Yes, if you develop it. Now, if you eat up. And you know, get uh, heavy, then the body just makes its adjustment, and you have knee problems. Gotcha. As far as lifting weight, it's not going to develop the muscles if it knows that the legs aren't muscular enough to handle it. Gotcha. So my whole concept is working with the people, understanding that the core, as with the foundation building the house, without a proper core, yes. a strong core, things will develop. Gotcha. The core is in between the upper and the lower body. Gotcha. So if you got to get that tight. You got to get that right. At the same time, you can still stimulate the upper and lower body uh, simultaneously. So what this bar does, it creates a in balance environment, right? And yes. use the body to uh, use the core to balance the body. Wow. But at the same time, while you're doing resistance, like a push up, you're balancing yourself. So it forces the core to um, fire up the intrinsic muscles that's yes. stimulated by the nervous system gotcha. that you can't even see. Gotcha. So people trying to build abs, one, you got fat on top of the abs, and two, <laughs> your foundation is not solid. So if you build a house on sink and sand, it's going to sink. Yes, You'll sir. never see, you know, the, the real quality of it. Yes. So the first thing we want to do is build the core, Yes. you know. And so the core comes with dealing with the transverse adonimus, the rectus adonimus, the um, um, serratus, and, and the obliques. Yes. That deals with the core. And once you get that nice and tight, then you can work around everything else. Got you. So we, instead of working with the core by itself, what we designed is that we can do resistant training, develop the muscles on the outside as well as the core on the inside. Love so this is what this device does. Now, now, Pastor, are you still you still singing? Right? You still have a wonderful voice. Yeah, my brother. Matter of fact, we're just coming out yeah. with uh, 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 something now. We changed uh, uh, everything at this point. I'm just changing a whole lot of okay. um, imagery and that kind of thing. So we we're called the the brothers now, so the Jenkins brothers, and we're doing something called inspirational soul, yes. inspirational music to inspire people. In fact, we're launching that. Uh, well, he's launching that because he's in charge of that. Okay. I can't do everything. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> but you're strong so enough launching. now. You can do it now. You're strong enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> November 13th, we do our, uh, it's, a, it's almost like a debut kind of thing. You gotcha. know? So we're still doing that. Because, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I was just mm -hmm. thinking, man, you guys do a singing tour, but at the same time, you're also promoting your product, telling people that if you want to be uh, spiritually strong, you got to be physically strong. I, I, Absolutely. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And, and, and people and, don't realize. Yeah. And, and, you know, another thing, I was joking when I opened up the uh, the uh, the conversation with you, right? 
What would it look like if you had churches challenges across the country? If everybody, if, if everybody's minister bought this bar, they would have to agree to do, uh, you know, a hundred pushups a, a week or mm-hmm. t- right. Mm-hmm. Now, come on, man. You, we, you, we, we have the challenge. Okay. We have the challenges already in place. Yes. And, um, and one of the things is that's our second tour. Yes. Once it's out, because we have letters going out to the churches yes. to to encourage people to understand you got to have a balanced life physically and spiritually. Absolutely. People don't realize Jesus was in shape. He yes. couldn't walk those many miles. You right. know, they didn't have cars. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, he walked thousands and thousands of miles yes. and steps a day. Yes. You know, and in fact, he wouldn't be able to endure the cross had he not been strong enough. Thank you. You know, so we, we got to look at the physicality behind the spirituality. In fact, yes. he said, man shall live by bread alone, but also by the spirit of uh, the word of the mouth of God. There's a balance that we got to have yes. within our bodies, yes. you know, I to really that. understand, to be used and stay strong yes. and be up and, and going. And, yeah. I, and I remember when he came into the temple and he turned over those tables. Yeah, that took some strength. It took some strength <laughs> compared to the tables they had back then to what they had now. man. <laughs> right. Oh, right. Pastor, I, I am loving this. So one more time, what's the name of the product? Name of the product is Core Push-Up Bar. Cor- and can, and we, can we talk about the price? Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. How much is how much does the product cost, Pastor? The bar is two forty nine. It was originally two ninety nine, but yes. we're doing a discounted price now. Okay. Two forty nine. You can go online okay. at corechampion dot com. And what's so beautiful about this is this is a limited edition. The first 500 is limited because this has a uh, 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 hand wrap okay. um, addition around the grip. Okay. We're not going to be producing that in the next uh, batch or the batches to come. Okay. You know, uh, So the best thing to do is get that now. Yes. And it's at a discounted price at two forty nine. Yes. And then we have bands, we have gloves, we have T-shirts, we have sliders and different things like that you can see online okay. and purchase it from there. I love it, man. I love it. Any regrets doing this 10-year process? Not one. Okay. Absolutely not one. What would you do different, Pastor? I would, if I had to do something different, I would have made this a priority. Okay. You know? And what do you mean Because I was sporadically. I was sporadically dipping. You know? I would have just went at it. So you're... You know, I would have made... So you're saying uh in the 10-year period... You could have short, shortened the time frame, like by by five years. You think? I think about three years. Okay, okay. I could have, about three years. I could have shortened it. It doesn't take that long to do a lot. Okay. Um, and if I, uh, yeah, that's what I. If I had to change anything, it would it would be that. Yes. And mm-hmm. then, and then, what what was your motivation to stay steadfast to this product, to this conception, to this idea? Wow, that that's a very strong statement because a question because. I had to realize when I started ministry, yes. I never saw the church as being inheritance for my family. You gotcha. know, that was not mine to give. I didn't, okay, my kids won't take over this, that kind of thing. And some churches, some pastors do that because they have kids that God has ordained for them to do that. Yes. I did not have that. My kids are very well. They're college educated. They're doing well, but they're not pastors. They don't want to be. They saw what the church know, and I'm, I'm going to clown when I say that. Yes. They just saw the workings of the church and how difficult it can be. So they didn't want to get involved in terms of that. They were all... Raised in church, they love God, all love the Lord, that kind of thing. But they yes. don't want to run a church. So for me, my inheritance was not that. Yes. You know, so I had to really think about what am I going to establish so that my children's children's children can perpetuate when not when I'm dead, but even while I'm here. Yes. And so because of fitness and my all my grandkids, in fact, my two grandsons, ten and what, ten and nine. Yes brothers they're number one they uh in the nation now as quarterbacks in their age group wow, and my other right. grandson in soccer he's big and his all my grandkids are really into sports they drink water they don't drink juice they don't drink soda they just they're really conscious about health and i said what better opportunity for them to run this company so yes. we established this company and my whole family runs it okay you know and it. so i got my kids involved i got my grandkids involved they had jobs to do they're all gonna be certified by the age of 16. Yes. And so we're just working with that. So my motivation is to make sure that they have something to uh, continue. I love it. Wow. I love it. You know, while we're living. Creating a generational wealth now by creating this product. Right. I love it. Thank you. Now, what advice would you give to a, and I apologize for saying this, 
a senior, will we call ourselves senior entrepreneurs or just older uh-huh. entrepreneurs? Okay. So, Either way. <laughs> okay. So, so, so what advice would you give a senior entrepreneur stepping into wanting to start a business, wanting to create a product now? What advice would you give to him or her? Know your limitation. Yes. Because some things that we create now yes. was meant to be created when we're younger. Got you. With the, pr- the pressure I'm dealing with now, okay. when my doctor said my cortisol level was high, was yes. very high, and I'm very, you know, I'm very conscious of my health. Yes. And I said, well, doc, you know what I'm doing? He said, yeah, you could, you're supposed to have done that when you're 25 or 30. Wow. So now you have to be able to balance. Watch this. This is very, very important. If you're going to do something on this level, make sure you give your body time to rest. Yes. When the day is over, cut it off. Yes. When there's a sympathetic and parasympathetic system in your body, your body knows. When you start yawning, that means your body is now releasing toxins and it's telling you, stop. Yes. You need to replenish the cell. Okay, so come 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, stop it, go drink some tea, take a shower, and go to bed and relax and get up the next day. Do not run beyond that sympathetic system process and run into the time where you should be resting and replenishing your cells because now you're going to work on fumes and cause havoc to the body. Yes. I'm not saying don't dream. I'm not saying not to go after anything. I'm saying make sure you get your rest in the process. Yes. I love it. What would you tell a younger person trying to create a, a, a business venture? What advice would Go you give? Go at them? it. Gotcha. I, I, if you got a dream, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, if you have a dream, understand it takes time and it takes effort and it takes pressure. You cannot get the grape to get the wine out of it yes. if you don't put pressure on it. So the best quality is through pressure yes. and it pushes toward pro- in, in progression. Yes. Progression leads closer to destiny. I tell the young people, while you got the strength, while you got the fortitude and so forth, whatever you have in mind, go for it yes. and prepare. Like TDJ would say, don't prepare for success without the storm in mind. There's going to be challenges Yes. and get ready for the challenges, Understood. but it can be done. Understood. Now, now pastor with the, with the time that we have left uh, a few more questions, now, even though you're older, did you have a mentor through this process, through the, the business process? Did you have a mentor? You know, it's strange. I had a lot of people who I would um, 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 lean toward and, yes. and use as an iconic view. And a lot of my people were people of the secular industry. Okay. That understood it did, it did, it just required, more, it did, they understood it required more than just prayer. Yes. You know, and a lot of times we think God's going to throw it down at us, but Noah had to build what God said. Yes. You know, God gave him the blueprint. Now you have to build it. You yeah, have yeah. to save your family. You got to build the ark. Yes. You just can't pray. Faith without works is dead. Yes. And so the, the, the secular world helped me understand the business component and the spiritual world helped me understand God being the, the, the fortitude behind what I do. Yes. Um, so I, I had a lot of mentors from different perspectives and different views of, um, of success. Thank you. Now, uh, any shout outs that you want to give to anyone? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Everyone who's successful, you know, I and, and I mean that I yes. look at TD Jakes. I look at, you know, I look at Jakes. I look at a lot of people, a lot of these pastors who are doing well, they, they get hammered because people think that the success comes from the church. Yes. Like for me, people think I don't get a salary from my church. I haven't gotten a salary from my church in 10 years. Wow. Okay. You know, and a lot of people think that your success is based on you gleaning from the church or the future of the church. That is not the case. Yes. So when I look at these guys who I know behind the scenes are working hard and, and, and got other things happening to yes. feed the church. Yes. You know, those are my guys. I like, you know, I, even though they may get bad, uh, 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 you know, kickbacks and so forth, yeah, yeah. Uh, what they're doing. But I know they work hard. These yes. people are grinding yes. and, and are doing uh, uh, great things and at the same time have to feed a flock on a weekly basis with a fresh word. That's a lot of work. I can imagine, yes. You know, yes. yeah, that's a lot of work. So those are the ones I glean at and say kudos to. Yeah. Now, now, Pastor, let's, let's have fun for a second. Uh-huh. You, you've got your product out there, right? You've mm-hmm. got to do a commercial or infomercial. Who is going to portray you? Who's going to be you? Who's going to portray you? Who's going to be your part? Who, who's going to be my... <laughs> yeah. Like... Like, like, uh, who, who, like we're, going uh, to get the, we're going to get The Rock. We're going to get Kevin Hart. Who are we going to get to, to be your part, to be uh, your part uh, in a commercial? Uh, 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 
What's his name? Um, the Hulk? Mar- the, Mar- the, Mars Mar- Chestnut. Mar- Mars Chestnut. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know what? I'm, yeah, think- that- I'm thinking Mars Chestnut must be a spiritual name or spiritual code word because you are like the third pastor I've spoken to <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> who said the same thing. He, he must be like this spiritual guy, right? <laughs> he, he, he's the in-between guy. Okay. He, he's unassuming. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. And gotcha. he's not too far over left or right. Okay. He's a good family man. He understands business. He understands spirituality. And he's not trying to conspicuously display it. Got you. Okay. It's like, you know me based on the energy that I get. Okay. So Morris Chestnut would portray you in your commercial for your, for your product. That's all right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) So pastor, anything else you want to share with the listening audience about your product? Uh, I'm just excited. I yes. want everybody to really understand based on where people are and how diseases are now infiltrating lives of people who are suffering with pre, um, existing issues yes. that there's still hope. Yes. Not just my bar. And, you know, just, just do something. Yes. Make sure you are exercising. It doesn't take a lot to get it done. Yes. You know what I mean? And as you get older, you're supposed to do less. Yes. We got something called Fit in 15, meaning in 15 minutes, you get your heart rate up with our core bar. You get a full workout. We have it uploaded now on our website. You can look at it now, corechampion.com, yes. and you hit exercises or workouts, and it'll show you different exercises that the bar does that you – it's very, very – um, um uh, it's easy. Yes. And then you have some difficult ones. You know, okay. it all depends what, what level you're on. But it definitely works, and our whole model is Fit in 15. People have the time to spend – of an hour or two in the gym, that kind of thing. But 15 yes. minutes, you get your workout on, you purchase the bar, and then we're going to have live uh, Zumba day, yoga day, those kind of things in uh, next month. So we're going to be uploading these different things so people can have access to just getting in shape. Love it. You know, yes. not, you know, being healthy. Yes. Fit and being healthy is two different things. Yes. You can look fit and not be healthy. Yes. You know, so we, we work both sides of it. And then one more Do time. Do something. One more time, Pastor, with the name of the bar and how people can uh, – Get the bar and support the, your business. The name of the bar is Core Push Up Bar. Yes. And the name of the website is CoreChampion.com. Yes. Pastor, you have CoreChampion.com. been. You have been fantastic. Is there anything else that, now that you still have the platform? Anything else you want to share for the listening audience? Because I, I, I really do appreciate you. This has been a long time in the making, but thank you. Man, I, first I want to thank you. Yes. I really. I really, and I want to apologize because I've been doing a lot of traveling with this yes. and we just couldn't lock it down, but I'm glad we made the connection and I'm just excited, man. And, and I'm just glad to be a black man. Um, found out that I'm the first to invent, uh, a, a fitness instrument. Yes. You Love know, it. and that, that's pretty, that's pretty strong for me. Absolutely. So I, and, and, and you're from, you're, you're from the Trenton Hamilton area. So that bodes well for encouraging our young folks as well. Young folks, young. Actors. Right. Well, actually I'm from New Brunswick. Oh, okay. and I, and I just got, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They just, exit nine now. Exit yeah, nine. Yeah. That's my peak. But your, but your church is in Hamilton, right? Right. That's, that's, in that's, Hamilton. that's good enough for us too. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Pastor, nothing but continued success and blessings on your product, on your musical ministry. And let's stay connected because we, you always have access Please. to the uh, to the podcast. If there's anything that we can help you do to expand your reach, we would love to be a part of it. Appreciate you, man. Okay. I really do. Pastor, thank Jesus, you so much. Thank you so much. Let's talk in text. We'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That concludes another episode of The Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. We hope you found this episode informative and enlightening. If you have any questions or comments about any of our episodes, please call 609-731-9382 609-731-9311 or email Kevin at minding-our-business.com We look forward to joining us for our next one. Until next time.